Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Crypto Ginger here. I just want to take a very quick moment and go over some of the more recent news when it comes to Hyperledger and some of the newer developments that are taking place. Also, I wanted to really kind of emphasize that the Hyperledger blockchain project is growing because new members have been recently added to the Hyperledger project. And if you're unfamiliar with the Hyperledger project or even anything having to do with Hyperledger, most certainly check out Hyperledger's website. You can actually get a little bit of information about the Hyperledger through Ripple's website just as well. And of course, I do have some past videos that I've done talking about the Hyperledger Quilt and the Interledger Protocol, which actually allows for what they call interoperability on the Hyperledger Quilt. I don't want to go too much into the depths of that, just simply because that's something that's been explained not only on their websites, but of course in my previous videos. So please check that out. I do want to talk about these new members though. Here we have an article from Coindesk.com talking about how uh, three main companies have actually onboarded themselves to the Hyperledger project being Deutsche Telekom, Alibaba Cloud, and Citi. Now the article kind of explains that there are roughly 16 new members of the actual blockchain consortium Hyperledger. And some of the Hyperledger members now that have been onboarded include, again, Alibaba Cloud, Citigroup, and its City Venture Arm, uh, the blockchain platform WeTrade, and again, Deutsche Telekom, which is actually the largest telecommunications provider in Europe. A couple of the other additional companies here, you can see that there's a list here uh, as far as, again, some of the newer members. And just as well, looks as though with the latest addition, Hyperledger has grown to more than 260 members. Now, I'm bringing this up because that is a very large member group when it comes to connecting different types of companies together through the Hyperledger. And again, if you're unfamiliar with the Hyperledger quilt, Definitely, definitely check that out because that's going to connect so many of these companies together through different types of ledgers, giving them the availability of things such as Atomic Swap. Further in the article, it talks about Hyperledger's executive director, Brian Billendorf, said that the additions prove that interest in the blockchain space continues to grow. And he also states here that the growing Hyperledger community reflects the increasing importance of open source efforts to build enterprise blockchain technologies across industries and markets. The latest members showcase the widening interest in and impact of the DLT or the distributed ledger technology and Hyperledger. So as you can see, just simply having these particular new members is just going to help widen and spread the, uh, the interest and also the impact that all these companies will have together on the Hyperledger and the distributed ledger technology. Now, of course, the article goes a little bit further into talking about uh, Hyperledger Fabric. We can see here that John Kellyan, who is a senior vice president of Deutsche Telekom and head of the R&D unit T-Labs, said building a roaming application on Hyperledger's Fabric was a natural choice. He added that businesses in particular benefit from using an open source permissioned platform such as one based on Fabric as it provides a production ready ecosystem ideal for groups with multiple stakeholders. The article continues to state that Hyperledger has been steadily adding new members in recent months as well as pushing tools for developers to utilize its software. And of course the article talks about how earlier this month the consortium released a cryptographic library called Ursa to help blockchain developers more easily create implementations while cutting down on bugs so I wanted to quickly uh, talk about that because here's another article from Coindesk talking about Ursa titled Hyperledger launches cryptography toolbox for blockchain developers now looking into this a little bit further here this is talking a little bit more in depthly about the Hyperledger Ursa and it says that blockchain consortium Hyperledger has launched a new tool for developers a modular shared cryptographic library dubbed Ursa the Linux Foundation-led group announced Tuesday that Hyperledger Ursa will act as a repository of trusted cryptographic implementations aimed to make it easier for blockchain developers within its community and wider open source space to avoid duplication of development efforts. The article further states that the library will lead to simpler project maintenance and cut down on bugs, Hyperledger said, with most of all the crypto code being kept in a single location and reviewed by security experts, including developers who work on Hyperledger's Indy, Sawtooth, and Fabric projects, as well as cryptographers with academic backgrounds. 
And here Hyperledger states that our goal in creating URSA is to combine the efforts of all the security and cryptography experts in the Hyperledger community and move all of the projects forward. At present, there are two modules under URSA, one for modular standardized basic cryptographic algorithms and another called ZMix relating to more exotic tech such as smart signatures and zero knowledge primitives. Of course, uh, we have here Hyperledger stating that the novelty with URSA is the modularization and API, which enables blockchain platforms to easily use a wide variety of changeable cryptographic algorithms without having to understand or interact with underlying mathematics. So, again, we have what looks to be not only new members onboarding themselves with the Hyperledger project, but we also have this new development when it comes to uh, uh, this project called Hyperledger URSA, which again, it looks like it's just simply going to cut down on a lot of the bugs and it's also going to make project maintenance a lot easier and simpler to work around again if you're unfamiliar with hyperledger most certainly check out their website i'll leave a link in the description for that i'll also uh, leave a link at least on this video here for checking out some of the previous videos i've talked about with the hyperledger and of course the um, interledger protocol definitely check that out because that is something that ripple created and that will allow you to see how this is all being connected connected with Ripple the company. Now of course I wanted to go into one more particular article here I found very interesting. So I wanted to use this article here talking about how Binance partners with National Government for Exchange and of course if you're someone who has listened to uh, the YouTube content creator Digital Asset Investor he has most certainly talked about Liechtenstein and of course uh, meeting in Liechtenstein when XRP jumps up in price and I think it's interesting here because we have the Ministry of Economic Affairs in Liechtenstein has granted the Liechtenstein Currency Exchange a business license allowing it to provide virtual currency trading services for payment tokens. Now it does go into some of the explanation about the Liechtenstein Currency Exchange. Uh, one of the things that it also talks about, which is something that I'm not the biggest fan of, is the know your customer procedures. I understand for the sake of regulatory concerns and issues that the know your customer procedure and the AML procedure, they are being needed for these companies there. And all of that really has to do is with the tax information because anytime anybody makes any capital or gains, in most cases, especially in the United States, you're going to be taxed on that. In any other country, it's possibly it's gonna be different, but I definitely know in the United States, if you make any capital gains off of things such as crypto, you definitely have to pay taxes on that. So the KYC here really kind of applies to that. Uh, the article talks about how the exchange will have four divisions, the LCX exchange, the LCX vault, the LCX terminal, and the Binance LCX. The LCX exchange will provide investors with a platform to trade crypto assets, while the LCX vault will be an institutional grade crypto storage service that will employ dedicated hardware security. Uh, the LCX terminal will be a trading desk supporting other exchanges plus auto trading capabilities. Sounds like there was a, a little bit of a beta program that ran for the LCX terminal. And of course, uh, that was something that closed on November 23rd. So now we have what looks to be uh, the availability for all these additional functions for the LCX exchange to go into effect. And it states that the fourth division, the Binance LCX, will power a fiat to cryptocurrency exchange through joint efforts between between LCX and Binance. The fiat to crypto trading will involve major fiat and virtual currencies. LCX through a representative noted that other products in development will be announced and made public in the near future. So to summarize all of this here, you can see that the LCX exchange is uh, pretty robust. And of course, uh, with this expansion with Binance allowing for fiat to cryptocurrency exchange to be processed, anybody who wants to onboard with crypto can do so now because of this combo of LCX and Binance. So uh, a lot of information when it comes to these connections and these companies involving themselves with each other uh, and making some sort of partnership to help with what I would consider a mass adoption into cryptocurrencies. Now, I want to end it off on this right here. I personally don't believe that we're gonna see a very large influx of money coming into the cryptocurrency market unless there is a very major catalyst that takes place. That could absolutely happen in the month of December, which could change the dynamic of the cryptocurrency market in general and the entire ecosystem altogether. 
But again, I think we would need a very major catalyst to take place within the next couple of weeks to complete the rest of 2018. Otherwise, we might just simply have to wait until 2019 to start seeing the flood of money coming in, whether it's slow or whether it's fast. I think that it's going to take some time. I think that due to regulatory concerns and some of the bigger companies such as Fidelity and Bact and ArisX coming out at the beginning of 2019, those are going to be some really good catalysts to help involve more money coming into the cryptocurrency market. So 